one. Game Invasion. Welcome to the debut of a new series here on Crash Landed. Game Invasion. Which honestly, is just a fancy name for game preview, but I like to keep things thematic. For the first episode, we're going to take a look at Fate Extella, the Umbral Star, for PlayStation 4 and PlayStation Vita. The title is coming out on January 17th in the US and January 20th in Europe, and the review embargo lifts on the 17th, so you can read our full review on crashlanded.co.uk. The game's developed by Marvelous, and it's a continuation of Fate Extra that came out on the PSP and the entire series is based upon the anime but it exists in a parallel world so it's nothing to do with that story really. This will just be a gameplay preview, be no impressions, I'll leave that for review. But one thing I will say is I really like the title screen. Title screens in gaming are always underappreciated and it's always your first impression when booting up a game. On this particular title screen the characters change depending on how many you've unlocked and which uh, storyline you're playing through. To quickly get into the gameplay, I'll just go to free battle. Won't be uh, doing main story, side story, anything like that. In free battle, you basically just play the basic game with the characters you've unlocked so far. If you can't tell, the characters in Fate are all based upon historical figures. Or well, they're versions of historical figures anyway. So we'll just choose my character, we'll choose Nero. And she's a Sabre class, which is basically hand-to-hand -hand close combat. Next we'll choose an enemy to face. Like I said they're not always heroes, sometimes they can be uh, terrible figures throughout history too. In Fate Extella, before you go into battle you can choose your two types of skills that you can apply. There's code cast and install skills. Code casts are abilities you use with directional buttons on the PlayStation 4 pad. You can craft different ones. As you can see what I've currently got equipped is Cohort's Mantle which allows me to do a decoy pressing up or heal pressing right and as you progress in the game and you go through the stages and get better ranks you can unlock more of these and you uh, spend points to craft them. Now the install skills are what you find throughout the stages. I believe there's uh, 58 to collect and they apply to your character. As you increase the bond with your particular character you allow more spaces to use more skills. And you can see at the moment they're colour coded as well depending on what type of skill it is from dealing lightning damage if they're in red or um, experience up. So there's all different types of skills you can apply. As you can see on the board if you apply the colour coded ones together they increase as a group their effectiveness. Now if you don't know Fae Stella is a Musou title. So if you've ever played Dynasty Warriors, it'll be familiar to you, with hundreds of enemies on screen. The combat is all done through two buttons basically, square and triangle, with square being a light attack and triangle being a heavy, and if you uh, press them in different combinations you'll get different attacks. These enemies are merely fodder, they don't really harm you. It's all to do with using these to increase your gauges on the left, the bottom left hand corner. See underneath my health bar which is in green, you'll see the blue little squares lighting up. That's my Fate Extella gauge. And as you can see I press circle. I can continue pressing it and use more of those little gauges to increase the power. If you see on the right, just below the map, shows the current enemies you need to beat. In each sector you need to defeat what's known as aggressors, which are basically larger enemies, and you've seen them with health bars. And if you defeat those, you take over this, this particular sector. But they don't always appear, as you can see if you look on the right, little icon in pink is slowly filling up as I'm killing more enemies. And if I kill enough, then they'll appear. You defeat those and you take over the sector. If you notice on the map, each sector is separated into different numbers and it's all about taking over enough sectors 
that you see in the top of the corner in the middle, the blue and the red, it's about filling that blue up so you can, you've got complete control over the map. So that may mean skipping over a sector that's only worth one point and going straight to the ones that are worth more points. But it also means any sectors you've currently taken over can also, the enemy can also take back. So you shouldn't always stick around in the area you're currently in. You should keep an eye on the map. As you can see right now, the enemy's trying to take over one of mine. You see the little arrows pointing from their sector to mine. It's in red to blue. So basically you travel to the sector. So I'm going to skip ahead and not bother with this particular one. And get straight to the enemy. Currently got equipped the ability to change my character using the left directional. So that allows you to change character at any time. I've got infinite uses of that. I can also dodge very quickly. You've got an infinite dodge basically using R1. So you can do it in both on the ground and in the air. You'll notice above my health gauge there's another gauge, it's like orange slowly filling and that's the moon crux gauge and once that's full you can press L2 and you'll transform your character for a short period of time into like its ultimate form. One more aggressor to kill. If you notice there's a chip, if you collect three of those in the stage, in the bottom left hand corner you'll see like a little graphic. If you collect all three, then you press R2 on a stage and it's like a screen clearer, it's like an ultimate attack. But you really want to save that for the bosses. So once you take over enough sectors, and like I said each sector is worth different points depending on which number's next to it, then the boss will appear. See at the moment I need five more, so you don't have to take over every sector, just enough to get dominance. But if you do take over every sector, you get a higher grade at the end of the map. And the higher grade you get, the more things you can unlock, with the highest grade being EX. Yeah, I've got another chip there. I only need one more. And they usually show up on the map with little orange symbols. Oh, the enemies appeared. Elizabeth Bathory is somehow a pop singer in this universe. Don't ask me how, but...
This is what's called a plant. It's like a weird floating creature. As long as that's alive, then it'll constantly spew out more enemies. But if you press a touchpad, you're able to see an overview of the areas you currently have and which heroes of yours are currently in which sector. You should always target the plants whenever you see them. See my gauge is now full, the moon crux gauge, the orange one, it's just on the bottom left, above the health bar. There's a little arrow you'll see on my body, like an orange arrow. So this is the last chip I need. That'll show you though the orange arrow where the nearest enemy is that you need to kill. This is my noble phantasm, my special attack is on R2. Each character's got a different noble phantasm and it usually kills everything in the whole map. Or the, in this whole sector. You notice all sorts of power-ups, these are things like health or Extella Maneuver Gauge. I've now asserted Dominance, so the boss now appears. So it's up to you whether you want to go straight for the boss and just kill the boss and win the map, or take over all the remaining sectors. You can lock onto any of the enemy bosses by pressing R3. But I transform using my moon crux. So basically this transformed me where I'm super powerful for a short period of time, as long as the gauge lasts. The more attack, the slower the gauge depletes. That's the stage done, and here's my rank. Like I said, I uh, didn't get all the sectors, so the rank wasn't very high. As you level up, you uh, get more combos and attacks, and these are all the different skills you collected throughout the map. The more you collect, they stack upon each other, so they don't go to waste. So that was Fake Stella, the Umbral Star. It comes out on the 20th here in Europe and on the 17th in the US. And you can catch our full review on the 17th exclusively on crashlanded.co.uk. Thank you and I hope you enjoyed the gameplay.